Today we celebrate the feast of the beheading of St. John the Baptist. For those non-Catholics might think that you're celebrating him losing his head. But see, the thing is we have to kind of get to notion, or correct notion of what martyrdom really is all about. Because this is something that should be very interesting if we think about it. Because on one angle, what do we know from sacred scripture? Our Lord Jesus Christ himself said that St. John the Baptist was the greatest man born of woman. Now you could argue, because you could think this way, that if that were the case, if he was the greatest, that God, especially after having bestowed on John so many extraordinary graces, to be able to recognize the Messiah while still in his mother's womb, to be the one to point him out to the people, behold the Lamb of God, to be able to want to be there for the baptism of our Lord, to prepare so many people for the coming of the Messiah. You could argue and think that God would, would protect someone like that. Let him live to be a hundred years old eating his locusts and honey. Make sure nothing happened to this man. And our Lord Jesus himself also says something else. Even if you're hauled into the synagogues or before kings and magistrates, not a hair on your head is going to be harmed. So when we hear these words, and look at what happened to John, you can ask yourself, but what happened? Why didn't the Lord protect him? It's because his martyrdom was the greatest act of witness that to Jesus that St. John had ever done. So instead of looking at it and saying, but I thought God was supposed to protect him, we have to look at it from the other way. First of all, in recognizing that God did protect him. He kept his faith strong right to the end. Something we pray for, final perseverance. God gave him the grace to offer his life and witness to Christ, and he brought him to heaven. What greater protection can there be than that? And so that's why we have to look, look intently at the Son of God hanging on the cross, and then say, do I really think that I should have nothing like that to do in my life? That I really will avoid that? Not if, not if you're a Catholic Christian. There's no other way around it. See, the promises that God makes to us are absolute. The difficulty comes, and sometimes we don't quite understand them the way God intends us to. Oftentimes we look at his promises of love and mercy and his presence. We think that we never should have to suffer, especially something like martyrdom. The thing, we have to look at life from God's perspective. But we also need to learn and see the value and dignity of martyrdom and suffering. Now, it's true, while it's something most of us are not going to be running to, martyrdom is something we have to understand the importance of. Do you all remember the old saying, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians, the seed of the faith? And so we know from the cross of our Lord it's only through suffering and death that the greatest good has come about, salvation. And it's still going to be through suffering and even through martyrdom that the greatest good will still be brought to us in that manner. It's quite an interesting phenomenon to see how things have changed. Back in the fourth century, St. Augustine actually had to preach homilies to his people, telling them, that not everybody is going to be a martyr. They desired it. They were practically lining up for it. They wanted to be martyred. So he's trying to explain to them, there's different people in heaven. There's virgins and married couples and so forth. Not everybody up there is a martyr and so forth. But then we have our day, don't we? And here us priests are up here standing saying to you all, and we know what it's like in the news, some people are going to be martyred. Some people have been martyred in our day. And what is our 21st century response? What? Martyred? That's not fair. But the question really has to do not with what is fair, but with what is proper. What is proper is what the church has always recognized right from the very beginning. What's not proper is our mindset on the whole thing. So what's proper here? What's the right perspective? If you're looking at this and saying, this is not right, people should not have to do this, you know something? People are willing to do this out of love. 
out of love. Remember, love is all about glory. Part of why we fall in love, part of why we lay down our, ourselves for others is to bring them into the glory of God and then His love, which starts the whole thing all over again. For those of you who are parents, you know what I'm talking about. What would you not do for one of your children? If your child were in an immediate line of danger, would you not lay down your life in place of that child? Of course you would. And what do we hear in the news just from a week ago? That horrible earthquake there in central Italy. There's one story of a beautiful nine-year-old sister who surrounded in an embrace her four-year-old sister. She died, the four-year-old lived. That's what love does, guys. It lays down one's life for the sake of the beloved. That's what martyrs show us. They love God so much they are willing to suffer and die for love of Him. And for those of us who run away from such suffering, for those of us who lose heart at the possibility of martyrdom, we have to ask ourselves, how much do I really love the Lord? If I'm unwilling to accept even a little bit of suffering for Him, then really, how much love do I have for Him? The martyrs loved our Lord Jesus so much they were perfectly united to Him in His suffering and in His death, so He could also be perfectly united with Him in His resurrection and in His glory. As we were all called to do as well, to love the Lord so much, be willing to do anything for Him. If we find out that we're not willing to do anything for Him, ask the Lord to take out your old heart and give you the heart of a martyr.